could have done all of our post HCR merge editing in Lightroom, or probably we could have done most of it even in HCR Effects Pro. We couldn't do all our editing in HCR Effects Pro because it's not a standalone program. You need to use it with Lightroom or Photoshop, or it works with a couple of other programs too. But I want to teach you some other tools in Photoshop. So let's bring this up in Photoshop. To bring it up in Photoshop, we just have to right click on it, click on Edit In, and then Photoshop. We want to make sure we edit the copy with the Lightroom adjustments that we just made, because otherwise, what was the point in making them? So we make sure we have that checked off and click on Edit. This will take a while, so I'll cut parts of it out. You don't want to be bored just waiting for programs to open. Now that you've successfully downloaded the Nick Collection, you'll probably see this screen come up every time you open Photoshop. I never access the Nick modules from this menu, so I just close it. I haven't really figured out a way to get rid of it, but maybe there is. Have to Google it sometime. Whenever I bring a photo into Photoshop, I want to duplicate the background layer so I can always get back to my original photo. So I'm going to right click on it and hit duplicate layer. On this particular layer, I'm going to increase some of the saturation in certain areas. So I'm going to name the layer appropriately. So to increase the saturation in various areas, we want to use our sponge tool. Now your sponge tool might not be on top. I use the sponge tool a lot, so it is on top here. If it's not on top, you just want to click this little arrow here and it'll bring up the various tools under this particular menu setting. So if it's not up, click on sponge tool. Okay, I'm going to hit Control plus or Command plus if you're on a Mac. And I want to see the barns a little better. So I want to increase the size of my photo until I can zero in on the barns a little bit. And I want to increase the saturation of this red. Now my brush is a little bit too large right now. In order to make the brush smaller, I can either go up into my menu and make it smaller, and I can also change the hardness. Usually with stuff like this, I want a soft brush, so I leave the hardness all the way down. I can change the size here, or I can change the size by using a shortcut and just use the left bracket key to make it smaller or the right bracket key to make the brush larger. So this brush looks like a good size to me. We want to make sure that we're set on saturate. Right now it's set on desaturate, so let's change it. And I probably want the flow to be between 25 and 30%. It is cumulative, so if we want more saturation, we can just go over the same area more than once. So we want to be on the conservative side with the first pass. And we can go over the area more if we want to see more saturation. So I'll leave it at 30%. I'm just going to go in and brush that red area a little bit. And here. And in here. If I want to move my photo but still keep it enlarged, there's a shortcut where I can just hit the space key and my handle come up and I can move my photo. Maybe I want to make this area a little bit more saturated because that's kind of a cool area and it stands out. Now I want to make my photo fit onto the screen so I'm going to hit the control or command on a Mac and minus key and we can see the whole photo. Maybe I want to add a little bit of saturation in the sky but I want to use a large sweeping brush for that so I'm going to hit the right bracket key until my brush is pretty large it's probably good I'm just going to brush across this kind of brilliant area a little bit remember when you go back and forth it's cumulative Go a little bit over here but I especially want to bring out these clouds up in here and you can see I'm going over them a couple of times to make them stand out a little bit more up in here 
Okay, and that's looking pretty good. I, I like the way that looks. All right, now I'm going to make a new layer. And if I hit the Control or Command Plus, see my buildings are a little bit soft. I'd like to sharpen them up a little bit. I'm going to do overall sharpening to the photo, but I want those buildings to stand out a little bit more. So let's make a new layer. So we're going to duplicate the layer. And this one we're going to call sharpness. And I'm only going to do some controlled sharpness at this point because I'm going to do global sharpness later. I'm going to leave the photo up at this level. And now I want to go over to my sharpening tool. The sharpening tool is over here. There aren't any more tools under that. So we just click on that. I'm going to leave the mode as normal. That's usually what you're going to want to use, especially until you get more advanced in Photoshop. And we'll leave the strength at around 50%. Remember, whenever we do a layer, we can decrease the opacity of the layer if we go a little bit too far. So I'm actually going to increase this a little more. Use my hand key to pull it over. We're going to just increase the sharpness on these areas a little bit. I'm going to do global sharpening too, so I don't want to overdo it. Just a touch. Okay, that looks good. And maybe go over and just do this building over here a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Hit our control minus to see what it looks like overall. Okay, liking the way it looks. Now, I don't know what I really need to do any dodging and burning on this particular photo. Dodging and burning makes particular areas of the photo look darker or lighter, but I want to show you those tools. So let's make a new layer. Again, if I don't like what I do, I can always delete that area or just not show it in the final photo. So duplicate layer and we'll call this dodge and burn. Hit OK. Okay, the dodge and burn tools are under the sponge tool, so we'll right click. And the dodge tool is going to make things look lighter. So let's work with that one first. And maybe I want, I'm going to leave the photo smaller. Maybe I want this area, I like the way the sun hits this building. Maybe I want to lighten it just a little bit. We can choose whether we want to lighten the highlights the shadows. Let's kind of lighten the shadows right over in here and maybe make my sponge a little bigger and lighten the shadows just over in this area around the horizon a little bit to bring them out. We can see the difference with, it's pretty subtle, but we can see without and now with. And we can see it did lighten it a little bit and I'll decide whether or not I like that later. Now, do I want to darken any areas? Maybe this grass right in the front area is a little too bright. So, since I like my lightning, I'm going to make a new layer. I know I called it dodge and burn, but let's just call this one burn. This is the great thing about layers. When you get something that you like, create a new layer so that you can always go back to the layer that you liked. To get to the burn tool, we're going to have to right click. You notice that if you hit the mouse right on something, it'll show you how each of these tools work. You're going to have to right click on this and click burn. I've got shadows up here, but what I really want to darken a little bit are the highlights. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to leave my exposure at 15% where it is right now because I want the look to be subtle. I want to decrease the brush size I have right here a little bit, so I'm going to so I'm going to left click on the bracket key. And I realized that with the screen capture software I use, you can see where my mouse goes, but you can't always see the correct brush size on the screen. So keep that in mind. I'm going to use a medium size brush size here. You can look and see exactly what I use by looking at what the brush size is up here. And you can do that for all the tools where I've used a brush. So I'm just going to sweep it across a little bit and especially and go back and forth a little bit in this area that especially stands out as being bright. And I can see how that looks by turning it on and off over here. So there's with it off 
And you can see when we turn it on, I don't know whether you'll be able to see it with my screen capture software, but it's just a little subtly darker. I like that it's a little darker, but if I think I've gone a little too far. I can change the opacity of that layer. This may be something you can't see very well on the screen capture software, but we're looking for just subtle changes. So maybe I'll bring it back to about here. And whenever you're doing this type of work, there's no magical formula. It's all about how it looks to you. Now, if we change the opacity on a layer, we don't want to go from there and keep working on it. We need to merge that layer so it's now at 100%. I can merge the layer and keep the old dodge and burn layer by creating a new dodge and burn layer. Duplicate the layer. And then click on both layers, right click, and merge layers. If you want to use any other tools from the Nick Collection, we can actually find them up here under Filter. And the Nick Collection has kind of a nice noise reduction filter. I'm seeing a bit of noise in my sky, so maybe I want to take that out a little bit. So I'll click on Filter, Nick Collection, and the noise reduction program is defined too. And the nice thing about the Nick Collection noise reduction is it'll look for the areas that have noise and just apply the noise reduction to those areas. It takes a while, it analyzes the photo, and you can do a lot more with it. You can look for some videos on YouTube, they'll show you how to use Define a little bit more. But I think I've done what I wanted to do here. I reduced the noise in the sky, but it's really left our grass and building area alone. So I like what I'm seeing, so I'm going to hit OK. And it creates a new layer all by itself. It even named the layer for you. I'm going to hit Control or Command Plus so we can see the barns, because that's kind of where I'm worried about my detail a little bit. And we can turn the layer off. And you can see the noise in the sky when we turn it off. We can turn it on, and you can see we've kind of reduced that noise in the sky a bit. I like what I have. If I thought it were a little bit too much, I could always change the opacity. But I'm going to work from here. Next thing I'm going to do is use a technique that I like to use for sharpening. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to sharpen using a tool called the High Pass Filter. I'm laying my layer, and I'm going to go up to Filter. The high pass filter is under other, high pass, and I've got my filter set up the way I like it, but you want to make your radius probably somewhere around 5, I've been using 5.5, you can change it right here, or you can just type in what you want, which is sometimes a little less finicky than using the slider tool. So hit OK. With the high pass filter, we need to change our blending mode on it. So we click on our blending mode. And I usually like to use either overlay or soft light. If I want an extremely sharpened photo, I'll use hard light. And that might look okay like this, but if I hit Control plus, look in the middle, you'll see that it's kind of over sharpened. A soft light gives us a little less sharpening. But sometimes I like things a little more sharpened than that. It depends on the photo. You can go back and forth and see what looks best. So I'm going to hit Overlay, which is a common one that I use. It's not that different from Soft Light, but we can turn it off, turn it on. And you can see there's a pretty big difference. I've zoomed in on my photo. So I can see if I have any artifacts. If it looks a little over sharpened here, it's okay. When I zoom out, I like the effect I'm getting. So I'm going to leave it here. And now I'll save my photo. Do save as. So I'll call this barn at sunrise. I'm going to save the Photoshop version first. You want to save both a JPEG and a Photoshop version because you won't be able to upload the Photoshop version to Flickr. So I'll click Save. 
And that's going to automatically save this photo into Lightroom. And it'll take a little bit of time. So now I'll hit Save As, Barnet Sunrise, and save it where you want to save it. This time, I'm going to put in my pictures over here and save it as a JPEG. I always save the largest possible file, but if you're having trouble uploading, you might want to save a smaller file. And there you go. We're done. Our final photo is in Lightroom. Let's take a look and compare our HCR image to our original image. So I'm going to select the original image and the HCR image. And then we can hit F to go to full screen. Here's our original photo. And here's our greatly improved HCR photo. I think that looks a lot better, don't you? And although it's a little bit stylized, I think it actually looks a lot more like the sunrise that I saw that day.